Hello, my name is Rick and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I tend to review products that are under $25, so if that appeals to you, I'd recommend subscribing below and following me on my Instagram at rickskin underscore. All right, so today I have a review of e.l.f. Cosmetics Skincare. If you didn't know that e.l.f. stood for Isip's face, neither did I. <laughs> and this brand historically has been kind of like hit or miss for me. Uh, a lot of budget skincare brands, you'll find that the formulations or the ingredients they use are good, but the texture and the way it applies isn't that great, or the packaging might not be the best for sanitation or uh, preservation. And I have four products today. Usually when I'm doing like a brand review, I'll just go through their entire list and look at the ingredients and I'll pick ones that I would probably use from that list and then that's essentially what I review here on my channel. But yeah, usually price and formulation is mainly what I look for in a brand's repertoire. My first post on this channel was actually a, a review of their Super Hydrate Moisturizer and you can tell it was my first video because I'm on there like, hello guys, today I'm going to review. Like I looked so scared. <laughs> like I looked so scared. But yeah, let's hope this is my redemption and let's get in the review. All right, the first product I have is the Bounce Back Jelly Cleanser, and I'm just gonna start off with a twist off cap is possibly the worst idea for a cleanser because you dispense it onto your hand. Ooh, see, it's already like coming out. So you dispense it on your hand and then you either just have to let it stay and possibly let it leak out, or if you're like me, you dispense it on your hand and then you wanna close it and you put it down and then you realize you'll probably need more products. So now you gotta like open it up again, get more, and by then you have product and water all over your hands and it's just a mess. <laughs> so now I'll get into the star ingredients. And the main surfactant in this is actually the same surfactant that's advertised in the Glossier Milky Jelly Cleanser. And it's Paloxomer 184. And it's basically a surfactant that's used in eye contact solution. So it's really gentle, sometimes too gentle. It also has coconut fruit juice, which is supposed to be rich in amino acids, vitamins, and proteins that are supposed to help repair the skin barrier and ensure its proper functioning. It also has sugar maple extract. And in doing research in, into this ingredient, because I really haven't before, I read that it was supposed to have malic acid and tartaric acid, which are AHAs that help degrade the top layer of dead skin cells so you can easily remove them. It's also supposed to be rich in antioxidants and help calm inflammation, but I wasn't really able to find any like peer-reviewed ac academic journals supporting this, so I'd take that with a grain of salt. And then there's aloe leaf extract, and with extracts, I always say you kind of, we never know how potent the extract is, so with aloe, if you really want to make sure, or at least increase the chances of reaping those benefits, you want to look for aloe powder, because it's a, it's essentially the active ingredients with the water content removed. And aloe is kind of an all-encompassing ingredient. It's it's a humectant, it's anti-inflammatory, it's soothing, it's healing, it's skin conditioning. Brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. <laughs> I love it. There's been like a little bit of controversy lately in terms of aloe being potentially carcinogenic for the skin, but in doing my research, I actually found that um, the danger comes from when aloe is ingested because in our large intestine, we make an enzyme that uh, breaks down a component of the aloe and that's what turns carcinogenic, but if it's not ingested, it's not really a problem at all topically. And all of the studies I saw that were done were done on rats and there's certain types of rats that are bred to essentially be really susceptible to carcinogens and it's really just a way of initially seeing if an ingredient can be a problem. That's why they want really reactive rats just to see if they should even um, study it further. But yeah, there's really nothing to worry about at this point. And then there's cucumber extract, which has some minor antioxidant effects through uh, vitamin C and caffeic acid. Finally, there's panthenol, which is hydrating and calming. And then there's allantoin, which is healing and keratolytic. Keratolytic just basically means it's helping us with cell turnover. So as for the texture, it's almost identical to the Milky Jelly Cleanser. I'd say this is actually probably like a little bit thicker. You can see it kind of takes a little bit of a while to run down. But there's two ways I tried this. I tried it wet and it almost 
Like people say the Milky Jelly cleanser does nothing. This felt like it did nothing at all. I really just felt like I was like rubbing like a gel on my face that wasn't removing anything. So I tried it dry and that was worse because this doesn't have enough spreadability to just kind of glide over the skin. I found myself tugging and stretching a lot. So it's not a practical product to use. I don't feel like it's doing anything. And then on top of that, it has a lot of fragrance and I like the fragrance a lot. If you've had a Samoa's cookie, like the Girl Scout cookies, it smells exactly the same, exactly the same. <laughs> but it was kind of counterproductive to me to put a lot of fragrance in a cleanser that's supposed to be for sensitive skin. So based off those problems, I wouldn't recommend this product. So the next product I have is the Hydrating Primer Mist, and I'm just gonna go straight into the star ingredients because there's not a lot to say about a spray. First it has niacinamide, and niacinamide is also kind of an all-encompassing ingredient. It's a skin stabilizer by providing kind of part of coenzymes that essentially help with proper barrier function. And then it has hydrogenated castor oil, which is kind of just like a wax that forms an occlusive. And I actually like that in a spray because often you'll see like mist sprays, it's really just uh, actives in water. But having something that's kind of minorly occlusive like this prevents all that from just evaporating off your face. So I like that. There's also tocopherol acetate, which is a derivative of vitamin E, which is an antioxidant. And then we have a uh, cucumber extract again, which again, antioxidant. Sodium hyaluronate is also in here and it's a low molecular weight sodium salt of hyaluronic acid and it's just really great at binding water so just a basic humectant. And then there's some other ingredients here that I actually have to read the name of. It's siloxanetriol alginate and caffeine and those are antioxidants they help with circulation and they're also anti-inflammatory. So it's kind of hard to talk about a mist because there's not too many aspects of it that need to be talked about. Like here's the spray. I don't know if that's going to show up on camera. It's not the f finest mist I've seen, but it gets the job done and I like using it in place of water. Usually after I wash my face, I'll spray water and then put my humectant ser serums on. And this essentially replaces the water that I spray on my face just to add a few more actives and humectants into my routine. But I would totally recommend this. Um, it's just a basic hydrating mist that doesn't have any sensitizing ingredients, so all around a good product. Alright, so next is the Hydrating Serum. It's $12 for an ounce or 30 milliliters, and I'm just going to go straight into the ingredients again. So the first star ingredient is going to be glycerin, and that's just a typical humectant that's going to draw water from the air to your face, provided that your face is drier than the air. And then there's dimethicone, which is kind of controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. Just as a base, it's not irritating, it's not really that bad for your skin but for some people with like oily skin they don't like the way it feels and products that are formulated with a high concentration of it so it's really up to personal preference for this i personally don't mind it as someone with dry skin there's also jojoba oil in this jojoba oil is actually a wax that is just kind of used as an oil because it's that's the form it takes at the temperature it's usually formulated with but it's a really stable light oil that is close to the sebum that our skin naturally produces. So it's really good for those with dry skin. Shea butter. Shea butter is one of my favorite ingredients. It's rich in antioxidants, emollients, uh, skin soothing, skin repairing properties. It's actually able to shield you from UV radiation. And the antioxidants are vitamins A and E. And then it has vitamin F, which is gonna be a source of fatty acids that are gonna, that are gonna be skin repairing and anti-inflammatory. Then there's grapeseed oil, which is a really light antioxidant rich moisturizing oil. And then there's aloe extract. And the, the way I usually do product reviews when I have like a few products to do, and if the ingredients repeat is the first product that has it, I'll talk about it. But then for the following products, I'll just mention it. So for instance, I did aloe extract for the last product. So for this one, I'm just gonna say aloe extract. And if I don't go into detail, you'll know I've already mentioned it in the previous product. So it has aloe extract. And then there's tocopherol acetate, which is a antioxidant again. And then there's chamomile extract, which is a soothing ingredient and it can actually help uh, with uneven skin tone. There's sodium hyaluronate and then green tea extract. And green tea extract, extracts, you know, we don't know the potency, but 
Green tea has a antioxidant in it called EC EGCG. <laughs> and it's actually a scientific, re uh, it's been researched a lot and it's actually proven to be a really good antioxidant. So as for the texture of this, it's actually a really light emulsion, kind of like a lotion. And once you spread it out, it turns so thin, like it seems like it's really substantial but or integral, but then when you immediately spread it out it turns into like a watery texture so for people with oily skin you could actually probably get by with just using this as a moisturizer it's really light it does have the oils in it but it doesn't feel heavy at all but for me someone with dry skin who needs another moisturizer on top i'll use this in between my humectant stage and my moisturizer stage so i'll uh, spray my face with water use my hydrating serum then I'll use this and then finish off with a moisturizer. It would also work as a great daytime moisturizer just in general. But the thing about it is mine smells like pennies for some reason and it makes me afraid to use it. I don't know if they all smell like that, but this smells really off-putting. I don't get why brands just choose like to have fragrance in some products but then not in others, especially with a product like this who kind of like needs it. <laughs> But yeah, I'd actually I'd recommend the product just based on like how it performs, what it does, who it can perform well for. But that smell is like something else. But yeah, twelve dollars. It's a great product. Okay, the final product is the Hello Hydration Face Cream, and this is jam-packed with active, so it's actually a really, really great value for the price. So once again, we see niacinamide in this product, and it helps ensure a proper barrier function. Then there's trehalose, which is a humectant sugar that's going to be water binding, help with hydration. And then there's squalane, which is an emollient oil, which is similar to the oil that we produce naturally from our skin. And there's dimethicone, which is there again to act as an occlusive to hold moisture in. There's sodium hyaluronate to act as another humectant to draw moisture from the air. And then there's a few peptides here that together form Matrixyl 3000, which is a peptide system designed to basically do everything. It's supposed to reduce discoloration, which is evening the skin tone, and it's also supposed to be anti-aging in that it helps with skin elasticity and fading wrinkles. Finally, there's panthenol, which is vitamin B5, which is hydrating and calming. The texture of this is kind of interesting because when you first touch it, it feels like a really, really rich cream. And when you apply it, it kind of feels like that. It doesn't thin out as fast as other moisturizers I've used, but it dries down pretty matte. You'd think that a moisturizer that feels like this would dry down and make you look shiny, but it dries down really matte, which is why I recommend this for people with combo or oily skin. This is going to be a great general moisturizer for you. And then if you have dry skin, you can use this as a day moisturizer if you also don't like looking shiny. The only drawback to this is the scent. And it's not like a natural scent. It doesn't smell floral or botanical at all. It smells like a perfume, which is not something I look for in my skincare. I want it you know, the argument natural isn't better. I want it to feel more natural. I I personally love floral scents, like I love rose, peony, geranium, any of those types. But even though it's the second to last ingredient in this formula, it's so strong. And like, literally, if they just took the fragrance out of this, it would be one of my favorite moisturizers of all time. I'd recommend it to everybody. Because the texture works for like pretty much any skin type and the ingredients are amazing. It's just the fragrance. If they removed that, it would be like a holy grail for sure. And on that basis, I'd actually recommend it if you're not sensitive to fragrance or anything similar. It's a great value for the price. So that's going to conclude this review. I hope you learned something and that it helps you make a better buying decision. I think next week I'm going to do another campaign analysis like I just did for the Cray Beauty Oat So, Oat so Simple Moisture Water Cream. And I think my subject is going to be Biosance and their new Clean Beauty Sustainability Initiative. I've already wrote it and I have a lot to say. But yeah, I think that's going to be my next video. So if you'd like to see more reviews, campaign analyses, and stuff similar to that, I'd recommend you subscribe below and follow me at my Instagram at rickskin underscore where I post mini reviews, texture shots, and channel updates. And I hope you liked this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.